get a lot of questions um, from email about the hinge and the ramp setup. So I wanted to take a little time and uh, talk about you know how this works, and, and so everyone's got a really good idea. Um, this is three quarter black pipe, schedule 40. Um, any welding shop should have this. Um, this is supposed to be three quarter inch hot roll rod, but I just realized I don't have any. I thought I did, but I didn't. So it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, I found some three quarter threaded rod. It, it, it works just the same. I mean, you can go to any hardware store and get this. But what I wanted to talk about was the hinge itself. Now, I cut these, and then you're going to want to deburr the edges of these so you know it's not sharp and it's, it's smooth. Because when you have this together, it, it, you don't want any binding really. I mean, it, it'll wear off, but still, I like to start nice. And basically, the big one, the, the four inch one, goes in the middle. I have two two inch ones that go on the ends. And now you're going to want to leave just a little clearance, you know, between here and there. That way nothing ever binds up. You get dirt and crud in there. It's, it's, it's always going to work smooth. Now how I'm going to do this is I'm going to end up welding this and I'm going to weld this. So the two two inch pieces along with the three quarter rod are all going to be one unit. And the only, only the center one's going to spin. And what I do then is, I'll show you more, but um, basically I'm going to put this, I, I've got it marked out. You can do whatever you want. If you have a specific lawnmower or something, um, it, you, maybe wherever the tires are going to ride, maybe that's where you want to put your hinge because that's where it's going to be strong. Um, I just chose eight inches, and I got eight inches worth of hinge here, eight inches over there. Um, and the ones that are going to stay put, I'm going to weld them to the framework. And like I said, then only the tailgate and the center one is going to spin. Um, that's how I'm going to do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I've had plans in the past where I've basically done this with four, four, and four. Um, and I've run the rod all the way across, you know, so you have like a five foot long piece of three quarter inch rod. Well, money is money, and it, everything is getting more expensive these days. Um, and you're not hauling a skid steer on a trailer like this. Uh, so, yeah, I just look at it, and you know, I have a tendency to overkill everything. Um, but I'm getting uh, I'm getting better. So I really toned down the hinges and believe me This is still plenty strong enough. I mean someone would look at this and say three-quarter. Are you kidding? Um, you know, but whatever it's not much. I mean this versus a half-inch setup um, What are you talking a couple bucks? Uh, so anyway, and the bigger it's like a the bigger the tire the easier it is to roll over stuff the bigger the diameter, the bigger the rod, the, the less likely stuff's going to bind and, and rust up and then pretty soon your ramp doesn't work. And, but I mean there's a ton of ways to do this. I've seen trailers where they just come off here with a flat iron with a hole in it and then your tailgate also has a hole in it and that's your hinge. Uh, more power to you. I mean it, it, that would work. I just choose to go this way. It's stronger this way. Um, this will help the, the, you'll see, but when we put the ramp on, the angle iron that I use for the ramp, this hinge alone is going to beef that up, so that's not going to bend on you. Um, so anyway, I'm going to tack this up. I'm going to get it tacked onto here. Um, you'll see, and then we'll, then we'll go to, to, to install our ramp, and you'll see how that works and how we latch it here. So. Um, We'll get to it. I wanted to talk just a second now that I have this, uh, the hinges tacked on. I wanted to talk about welding um, to make sure that you get it welded on the top and the bottom of the hinge. That way it's not going to be able to peel off or anything. And try not to get anything on the other one that, you know, 
uh, you don't want to accidentally weld this one down. You know, this one's only going to get welded to your, your ramp piece. Um, now, these hinges work great if, you know, if you're putting plywood or if you're putting flat um, steel like I'm doing. Uh, this is the way to go, in my opinion. But there is a possibility that you're going to want to use 2x4s. Now, if you want to use 2x4s on both the ramp and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, and the, the tailgate and the floor, you're going to need to probably do what I talked about some trailer manufacturers do, where they put this piece of uh, flat iron out with a hole in it, and you're going to need this hinge a little bit further out. That way, when you fold it up, your 2x4 has some clearance here. Um, I know it's kind of hard to I can't cover every single, pro I'm trying to point out the problem, I guess. Um, I, it just depends on what you're going to use for a floor. So basically, if you're using expanded metal or something, you're fine. Um, if you're using 2x4s on your ramp, um, I feel like, well, that, that could get kind of heavy, but you know, if you want to do that, you're going to have to adjust your hinges. You're probably not going to be able to use a style like this because you're going to run into clearance problems. Uh, when you close it up, that 2x4 is going to want to hit that 2x4. Either that or you put another cross member in, put another cross member in here and end your 2x4s there, then you won't have a problem. So it's just the little things like that you kind of want to plan ahead with. Uh, but like I said, for flat and flat, it's good. Okay, now I've got a little bit of a confession to make. Um, I'm not building a ramp per se, um, but this is basically exactly the same as, as how I would build the ramp, and I have done it in the past, um, except for I made this a foot, haul, a foot tall. Um, I would make my ramp four or five feet. Uh, but it would be the same thing. I took the time and I 45 degreed the corners just like we did for the trailer frame and I squared it up the same way, corner to corner. Um, now, what I would do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these in just like this, like we did for all the other sides. Now, you could do this for your ramp or you could do something like put it in uh, so it's flat like that. Uh, so you get a good weld. If you're going to use expanded metal or something, you'll be able to weld it to here. And there, this is another one of those things where it's common sense. Um, if you are, if you're putting a big, heavy lawnmower, a riding lawnmower on here, I, I would put, you know, I would put at least two where you're going to have the tires or where you're going to have the, the most of the weight on here. Um, but like I said, you know, from what I'm doing, I'm setting up a portable uh, welding trailer. Um, I'm just going to go like this because the only thing I'm going to use this for is um, probably just a little table. Um, if I have to haul something a little bit longer, um, truthfully, this thing, this thing's going to be up most of the time, just like a normal side rack. But I wanted to. I wanted to do it like I do a ramp. Like I said, the only thing different is, is the length. Um, but as you can see, um, obviously it's tacked only to the ones that move. You know, these are stationary. I got it tacked on both sides. We're going to get it welded up. Um, but like I said, uh, on my plans, I might change them, I don't know, but generally the manufacturers, I've seen them from five foot long to uh, four foot long, generally speaking, and you know, it gives you about an angle like that to drive something up. Um, if you've got something that really sits low, you can't raise your deck up very high on your mower, um, you want a longer ramp to lessen this angle. If it's no big deal, if you're putting a, uh, 
ATV on or something, you got plenty of clearance, you can go with a shorter ramp because you know the, the transition in angles isn't going to matter. Um, so basically, the next step I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill holes through here and make my keepers and I'll tack my pieces in. Um, I left these out so I could show you, you know, if I was if I was doing something for a ramp, I, I would put multiple pieces in, but since I'm not, I'm just gonna do it like I did the sides. So we'll we'll build our keepers. Um, I would say we're really starting to wind this thing down. Um, we'll look at tail light brackets, you know, that's variable too. There's a million different tail lights out there you can use. And uh, I'm going to mount my jack, um, put my floor in. I don't know what I'm going to do with the sides yet. If I'm going to put steel on, I have steel for them. But um, we're starting to wind down and starting to look like something. And uh, I, I try to cover as much as I can. But, you know, there's always, someone's always going to build something a little different and need it for a different purpose. And I, just, uh, you know, I'm trying to cover as many bases as I can here. Um, so, anyway, we'll get started on uh, probably doing our little tail light brackets right now. All right, uh, here's the tail light bracket. Uh, you can see there's nothing to it at all. Uh, it's just a piece of 2x2x8 two by two by angle, 8 inches long, and basically from this point to this point, I picked. 12 inches. I have no idea why. It just seemed it seemed like a good spot for it. So um, just drilled two holes. Uh, again, you got 50 different kinds of tail lights a person can use. Um, I just happen to have these in my drawer. I've had them for about 10 years and um, I'm going to use them. What the heck. Now some people will go ahead and they'll, you know, completely enclose it, except, you know, for the, for the back, uh, they'll enclose it so that they don't get wrecked, and that's a good idea, but um, I'm not going to do that. These are too cheap, too easy to replace, so I'm just going to go with this. <laughs> 